Colonel Wood, if I can call the defendants expert, Mr. Neil Hargreaves. Yes, please. Definition of deferred revenue, please, Mr. Hargreaves. Yes, um, deferred revenue is where a company receives cash um, in advance of delivering the service or the goods. So, if um, if you receive the cash and you haven't yet delivered the service, you defer that revenue to the next year when you deliver the service. So, um, what deferred revenue does is it reduces the revenue in the current year and pushes us into the next year or beyond. And can you tell the court? Does that uh, include the payment received as well? The, if, the, the, if, the, if there is payment received or down payment or partial payment? What, what it's effectively doing, my Lord, is it's, it's treating the payment received as not in this year, but yeah. in next year. So they link it to the launch, that's right. That's yes. you. Can you tell the court what you understand by the term accruals or accrued revenue? Yes, um, the, the accruals concept, um, the accruals methodology, is one that um, recognises expenses and revenue um, when they are incurred or earned, rather than when the cash is paid or received. So um, it, it, it doesn't follow cash flows, but it follows the delivery of the revenues, um, or delivery of the services, or payment of the expenses. But there is just one thing to add on that, that um, when, when one is accruing revenue, i.e. we are recognising revenue before we receive any funds, it's important for the company to be um, for, for example, signing the deal. Signing the deal. If we recognise revenue when we sign the deal, we need to be reasonably certain that we're going to get paid. Because if we're not going to be paid, then there's too much risk. And thirdly, the concept of cash accounting. Can you provide a definition to the court, please? Yes. Uh, cash accounting, um, if you look at the two different methods, there's accruals accounting, which I've described, and cash accounting is, um, is uh, it, it's a very rudimentary form of accounting that's often used by small unincorporated businesses where you simply recognize revenue when you receive cash uh, and expenses when you pay cash out. So you said this is a ra rarely used methodology? It's, it's, it's rarely used in, in companies and, uh, and certainly uh, is, is more common. So the, 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 more, the more common one is the cruise concept. There are just, uh, my lord, two um, clarification questions on the um, agreed report, uh, if I may. And if you just turn to bundle D, um, and you need to go to page um, 3004A, which you'll find right at the back of bundle, uh, tab 2 of that bundle. Bundle D, 3004A. in terms uh, of understanding um, the, the, the terminology you've used in this joint statement, uh, 3004C, paragraph 1, where it says agree, can you just tell us um, 
what, 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 what you mean by that in that yes. place? Yes. Um, what I'm agreeing there is in relation to the issue. Um, so just to clarify that, that's, that's an agreement in relation to issue. I'm not agreeing with everything uh, that Mr. Divenboard is stating in his comment. I'm so agreeing with the issue. You agree there is an issue, but you don't agree to his opinion. I, I agree. You disagree with his opinion in that issue. I agree there is an issue, and I agree with the issue, as stated. Yes. The statement that's in, that's in the issue box I agree with, yeah. um, sub, and, and I clarify that in, in certain care, areas, but I don't agree with everything that Mr. Mr. Divenboard has included in his column. Yeah. Um, and if you can turn to um, item number four, which is at 3004E. Say, this is the second paragraph of your column. This means they were prepared on the accruals basis. Oh, sorry, what page is this again? 3004E. Yep. Item 4, the PWC audit. Mm -hmm. uh, your column, the second paragraph beginning PWC, therefore. Mm -hmm. uh, you see the last sentence of that paragraph. This means they were prepared on the accruals basis. Can you clarify what you meant by that? Um, yes, I mean, I, I go back to my description of the, accru the accruals basis of accounting um, uh, that I made at the start. And um, for international accounting standards require that accounts be prepared on an accruals basis. Um, so by PwC giving a clean audit opinion on those accounts, they, they were comfortable that they were prepared on that accruals basis as opposed to the cash basis. There may now be some questions for you. Yes, Mr. Hargreaves. Thank you, Mr. Richard. Um, Mr. Hargreaves, can I just take you to your report, please, which is a tab two of bundle D. And if you could just turn to page two eight two one. disagree over the purpose of the emails referred to in paragraph 2.4 above and other related communications between Mr. Lease and PwC, I have been instructed to assume that they were an attempt to increase the 2013 revenue by 5.2 million by recognising revenue on future launches. And who were you instructed to make that assumption by? Um, by Clyde and Co. I see. And can I just ask you this, when were you instructed uh, to prepare this report? I, I'm not asking you the exact, but... Um, from recollection, it would have been... Um, I really can't recall it. it. Maybe the first or second week of May? First or second week of May. But I can, I can check and... Okay. I have to check this, but did, did you have any... Uh, this, did you personally have any dealings with Elsico prior to being instructed by Clydeco? Any personal dealings? Well, no, but that's in your capacity as an accountant or auditor. As an, as an accountant or auditor, um, my firm has been um, appointed to consider various aspects of the of the SCA claim, um, the, the quantum of those of those claims. And when was your firm instructed? Um, again, forgive me. Uh, it would have been a month Last year? prior. Oh, uh, just recently. Yes, relatively recently. So prior to being instructed to prepare this report? Prior to being instructed to prepare this report. Was that you personally or a colleague? In, in, sorry, what? Who's preparing the report for the uh, SCA, proceedings related to the SCA? That, that work is at an early stage. We haven't even started preparing the report. But you've 
accepted instructions for that? We, we accepted instructions in that, yes. And is that by the same law firm? Yes. So, sorry, I'm sorry, was it a month prior to being instructed in relation to this report? Yeah. You mean April or something like that? Yes, m March, April. Are there any factual issues in this report that are covered or are likely to be covered in the report that you're preparing in relation to the proceedings related to the SCA? As I say, we haven't even started drafting that report yet. Well, so I, I don't You're not involved personally in that one. I'm sorry? Personally, are you involved in the other report? I haven't, I haven't been yet. I may be in the future. I see. And, um, but you were aware at the time of accepting instructions in relation to this report that your firm had already been instructed in relation to the other matter? That's correct. And so when you say at 2.9, I have been instructed to assume that they were an attempt to increase the 2013 revenue by 5.2 million. That is an attempt by Mr. Lease to increase the revenue. Yes? Well, yes, correct. Uh, and that assumption uh, is an assumption that he did so without anyone's consent or authority, I'm assuming. That, that is the instruction, yes. And so, given that instruction, presumably you're unable to comment neutrally at this stage uh, on the meaning and effect of the emails that we've heard about in evidence. I'm not, uh, and I made this clear in the joint statement, I'm not able to comment on the intention of, 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 of Mr. Lees uh, yeah. or the circumstances surrounding these emails. Okay, I'm very grateful. Okay. Thank you. Can I ask you to turn to tab 18 of bundle C7? Was that again, sorry? Uh, that's tab 18. My tab starts at 167. No, 18 is 7. Yeah, that's what I guess. Oh, I'm so sorry. My tab's. Uh, it's in fact tab 180. says um, in the second paragraph, proportional revenue is recorded on the date when risk attaches, which in the case of the launches is the launch date of the satellite. And then it says premium received in advance before the launch date is recognized as advance received under accounts payable. Do you agree mm -hmm. that that section there, I recognising premium received in advance as an accounts payable, 
means that you don't receive it under this rule, don't record it under this rule as revenue. Well, the I mean, that's what before the, means, the launch it? date, that's well, that's that's one of, that's one interpretation of that sentence. Yes. Thank you. And. Um, predecessor to this report, which is in fact a tavern. One second, it's the same number. And to page 2381. I should take page 2369 to start so you can identify the document. This is the financial statement for the year ending 31st of December 2013. This is the draft before the final version that you've seen. So you've just pointed me to the final version, which is tab 180. Correct. And, that and now you're problem. showing me a pre the earlier draft of that document. Correct. I think it was the around March 2013. I, I can't see a date on this. No, no, no. Take it from me. Okay. Um, if, we get, if we go to the same uh, paragraph 2.10, uh, page 2381, we can see uh, again the second sub paragraph. Proportional revenue is recorded on the date when risk attaches, which in the case of launches is a launch date as a satellite. And then we see once again the same reference. Premium received in advance before the launch date is recognized as advance received under accounts payable. That's the same sentence, isn't it? It's the one that I referred to you, referred you to in the final version of the account, isn't it? Confirm that for you. Yes, that's the same sentence. Yeah. So, um, recording revenue the commissions that are received uh, prior to the launch date, recording them as revenues, would be inconsistent with this particular sentence in the revenue recognition part of the financials, wouldn't it? Well, I, it's it's quite difficult for me to answer that question because I've not carried out an analysis of the 2013 accounts. Okay. Well, we'll so, that there. I mean, the, these were, um, uh, my lord, these were drafted and finalised after Mr. Lease uh, uh, was his, after his employment was terminated. So this was all after the event. Uh, and. Look at the 2010 uh, draft accounts, which just bear with me a moment. Uh, are at page, uh, sorry, bundles C2 at tab 28. We can see in the second paragraph it says fixed commission income is recorded 
on the date when risk attaches, which is in the case of launches, the proposed launch date of the satellite. You see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. And in the final version, after the claimant's dismissal, uh, we can see that, in fact, the word proposed has changed to actual, isn't it? I, I thought the word proposed had simply been removed, but if it's been replaced by the word actual, I can just confirm that. Well, perhaps I'm wrong. Let's just double check that. But I will. I can check as well. You're quite right. It is the launch date of the satellite. Right. Very great. So there's a change there as well, isn't there? Well, the, the word proposed has been removed. Yeah. And so all in all, there appear to be three changes made to the original or last version of the rec revenue recognition uh, note between uh, the last audit uh, and take it from me that the 2012 uh, financials have the same paragraph 2.10 as the 2011 financials. Uh, there are three changes then in the wording of the note 2.10 to revenue recognition before and after Mr. Lisa's dismissal. Um, could you just explain to me what three of those three changes have, what you believe them to be? Yes, in the wording, change number one is we go from proposed launch date to the launch date. Number two, we go uh, from uh, we include within uh, the relevant section, uh, a sentence about premium received in advance before the launch date is recognized as advance received under accounts payable. Uh, and, forgive me, I ought to have shown you this. I thought I could only count two. Two, you're quite right, late in the day. Uh, can I just take you back, please, to page 2360? Uh, which bundle is this? Uh, this is the same bundle that you're in. 2360. No, this is um, 3800. Oh, forgive me. Uh, if you go back to bundle C7. C7 tab? Uh, tab uh, 169. You'll see at page 2360, this is the first draft uh, in, 2000 and, in 2013 accounts. It's a, you'll see that there's no reference in there to uh, advance being treated as a payable. Is that right? Uh, those words are not there, are they? Those words aren't there, that's right. And what we do have instead is it says, in case of delays in launches of more than 90 days, premium received is returned in full to the name insured without interest and corresponding proportional revenue is reversed. This, this is, uh, it's, um, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm, I'm unclear. Are these draft accounts? Because I can't see draft on them. Well, uh, they've been provided by Clyde and Co. And we were told that this is the first draft before the final audit so, accounts that you see so, at tab uh, 170. So what we are discussing here are drafts of accounts, early yeah. drafts of accounts um, that, that then become a final yes. set of audited financial statements. Precisely. And so okay. the difference between, and so the reference to delays in launches of more than 90 days, uh, we don't see that in the final version, do we? Page I'm, two, I'm sorry. One. Perhaps I need to write this down, but I'm, I'm losing track of all of the versions of these 2013 accounts. Well, there's only two versions. All right. So, which tab are we? Is the final version? And, uh, you, you go to page two three eight one at tab one seventy. Page two three eight one. So, could you perhaps explain to me what 
Tab 170 is then. Tab 170 is the final audited accounts. Now these okay. are signed by the officers. No. They're not, these aren't signed by the auditors or the directors. As far as I understand, they're the final version, unless you know otherwise. But that's, that's what was supplied by those instructing you. No, you can take it under. That's what was supplied by those instructing you. So uh, I'm, I'm to understand that these are the final accounts yes. at tab, one se at tab 170. Right. There needs to be evidence of that to be believed. Well, do we have the final accounts here? Well, I, I, I'm told that these are, nothing changes in paragraph 2. In the index it says for 170, it's a draft financial statement. If you look at the oh, index. Oh, I see, sorry. There's, there's, a, there's a version at 180, which is the final version. And yeah, 80 is signed financial statement. Yes. So 170 so is a draft. It is. So there were two drafts and then a final version. So you can see at page 2481 in some other reads. Yes. And you can see uh, at 2481 we have the sentence premium received in advance before the launch date is recognized as advance received under account pay. Mm -hmm. You can yes. see here there's no reference to 90 days, and here it's there. Sorry, could you take me back to the tab of the 2011 account so I can compare Certainly. the two again? Well, first I want to take you back to the second draft of the 2013 accounts, which is at tab 170. says profit commissions are recorded in the year they are paid to the company which is contractually within the third year whereas in the final version of 2481 we say non-proportional revenue is recorded in the year following the expiry date of the policy. See that? Yes. And then if you keep your finger at 2481 and turn to 2360 which is as I understand it, draft number one for 2013. No. You'll see that here there's no reference to uh, treating premium received in advance as accounts payable, is there? Could you just remind me of the two three page? Six, 2360. 2360. Uh, Are you asking me to compare draft accounts with actual accounts or yes. actual account or final accounts with the final, final accounts? accounts that we've seen? There's no reference in the final accounts to the sentence in case of delays in launches of more than 90 days. Premium received is returned in full to the name insured without interest and corresponding proportional revenue is reversed. That's not in the final version, is it? Yes, but I'm not sure it's in the earlier, in the 2012 accounts either. Is no, it? I never suggested it was. So this is a change during the drafting process of the accounts? Precisely. Um, and the principal difference then, if I can use that expression, um, between the final version of the accounts in 2013 
um, the accounts, if you just go back to bundle C2, So now I'm comparing the final 2013 with yep. the final 2012. Correct. Right. And you can see the first difference is the proposed launch date. That word is gone. And there's no reference either to advance being treated as payable. Those are the two differences between the 2013 and 2012 accounts, and 2011 accounts that you've just shown. Do you agree that the difference in the wording, if it were to be followed, between the 2011 accounts and the 2013 accounts, in terms of accounting treatment of revenues, is quite substantial? Well. I think that's a debatable point because uh, this, this goes back to the evidence uh, earlier, my lord, which is what is a proposed um, what is a proposed launch date? And if one assumes that a proposed launch date is set when the policy is written and can never change, then uh, I accept that a change from a proposed launch date to a change to an actual date. Is the, it can, can change the way revenue is recognised between years. But if one accepts that a proposed launch date can change, as they have done, then the proposed launch date and the actual launch date effectively become the same when the satellite is launched. Because a proposed launch date can change on, on, until, until, until the satellite launch. And, and the other point to, to, to so can I just make one more point? Okay. And that is the statement that precedes that comment about the, uh, the launch date. And that is the proportional revenue is recorded on the date when risk attaches. That's the opening statement, of the mm -hmm. opening line of that statement. And I, I'm not an expert in uh, insuring the satellites, um, but to my mind, if you're saying that the risk attaches when the satellite is launched, then that's when the risk attaches. So you recognise your revenue when the satellite is launched, not at some suggested date when it might launch, because in that case, you could pass that date, if the date of the, of the launch has been pushed into the future, you can, you can pass the proposed date, but risk is still not attached because the satellite hasn't been launched. So I, I, I'm not an expert in this area, but I can see that, that the, wor the, the word um, proposed could be seen as otios. Well, I, I'm not asking you to interpret the word proposed as a matter for the court. I just wanted you to recognize but, but, the difference. And I think but, you, you, there's a debate on the issue. You well, asked he, me said, he, he said what he has to say. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, you asked me the question as no, to whether I'm it made a significant difference to clarifying the question I asked put to you to begin with. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, your uh, position then in relation to I just want to clarify this in relation to um, IAS 18 uh, I just want to take you to power to, one of the things you said in, in answer to the question that was put to you in uh, supplementary questions is that uh, if you were reasonably certain that the money was going to be returned for a reimbursement, uh, that you could treat that as revenue. Um, no, that's uh, that's a very narrow interpretation of what I've what I was uh, but saying. You use the word reasonably certain. That's if, those are your words. Because it's not as simple as that. 
um, my Lord. The, the, um, there are a number of factors to consider when one is recognising revenue from into the future. So if, if, um, if I'm a yeah, business... I'm not talking about recognising revenue into the future. I'm talking about the specific example you were dealing with, which is reimbursement of uh, revenue that has been paid back. So, for example, in the case of Amazonas, no. revenue had to be returned in January 2014. And the question is, do you have to be reasonably certain No, that's not. That's that, that's uh, that, that's that's not. That's not correct with respect. Um, sorry. That's not. That's not correct with right. respect. Um, what I was talking about is recognising revenue before you receive the cash. So, if you're a company and you want to recognise revenue before you receive the cash, you need to be reasonably certain that you're going to receive it in the future. And that, and, and that is, and that assessment is is one that does require an element of judgment. But it requires an assessment of the the contracts, what's happened in the past, whether you're legally entitled to receive that money, um, uh, and the approach that you've taken in the past. But you because don't you have need to be, be consistent. Can I suggest to you? Well, it just has to be probable, and that's what IASAT says, doesn't it? It says it is probable that the economic benefit associated with the transaction will flow to the entity. It doesn't say it is reasonably certain that the economic benefits associated with the transaction will flow to the entity. Um, okay. Can I just uh, yeah, turn to my joint statement? Yeah, it's paragraph 3.15 of your uh, yeah. expert's report, which is a tab. Can I, could I turn to my joint statement? Could you point me to that? Document? Yes. So our joint statement. Yeah. It's at the back of bundle Two. D. 3004A. Issue number four. This is issue number five. And the, I agree, IAS 18 states that income should only be recognised when it's probable that in any future economic benefit associated with the item will flow. The, I, no there, the, 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 IFRS, the IFRS framework states that it should be recognised, then it can be measured reliable and, a, and have a sufficient degree of certainty. Yes, but you make reference to the IAS, don't you, criteria? But in my, in in my report, report, but in my joint statement, I also refer to the IFRS framework. So th this, this is a, the, 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 whether or not a company accepts or recognises revenue prior to receiving the, the cash is a, is a it requires uh, some, some judgment. Yeah. But this is why companies adopt accounting policies which create a framework around how you recognize uh, revenue. So in this case, a revenue is recognized when the satellite is launched. So it's more like company policy rather than international accounting standard. The, 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 yes, the, the company adopts its own yeah. policy yeah. to revenue recognition. There are examples that you've heard in court where revenue was recognised even before the launches took place. One of which was Yasser, the other was Ariane's back. And, and I understand that in both those cases, cash had been received. But um, it wasn't treated as payable, was it? So. It was treated as revenue. It was treated as. It, 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 was, it was treated as revenue, um, and I mean, all I can say is that the company would have 
carried out an assessment of those specific launches. But you agree that's inconsistent with note 2.10 of the uh, notes to the audited accounts, which say that you shouldn't treat uh, revenue or premium or commission as, sorry, you shouldn't treat commission with revenue um, if, if it's received in advance of the launch. You're supposed to treat it as a payable. If that's, that's, um, that's correct. Um, there are cases where the funds have been received in advance of the launch, um, and I believe it's 30 days before the launch, or 90 days, forgive me. Um, and if the company decides that the launch is not going to get cancelled, or they're not going to have to repay that premium, then the revenue is recognised in the earlier year. But the money has been received. That's you know, fundamentally the cash has been received. Yes, but that's still inconsistent with note 2.10, because all that says is if the money is received as an advance mm -hmm. before the launch date, the launch date, then it's to be treated as a payable. It's There's no other uh, exception. Sorry, is this note 10 in 2013? Yes. Yes. But not note 10 in 2011. 11. Yes, but that's the position in 2013, and you're saying Everything was done the same way historically. No, no, I haven't. I haven't considered 2013. I've been looking oh. at consistency with 2010, 11, and 12. Because this is this. It's, the issue is, you know, what happened after Mr. Lease uh, left the business is is, is less relevant. Um, but if this things is, were being done on your version of events historically the same way from 2010, then why do we have the change? You're, you're the one who says that it's been done historically the same way, even in 2013. So why do we have a change? Oh, why not? No, no, I'm happy for there to be a change. I'm just asking if your case is that historically it's been done all the same way since 2010, why would we need a change in note 2.10 between 2010 and 2013? Well, I... I'm not sure whether that change has any had any impact on the financial statements. Yeah. Whether that's, that that change could just be to clarify or or make a note clearer, rather than fundamentally change the way that. that, that and it maybe is. Mr. Zishan wants to bring your attention that the claimant, Mr. Lee, still had a interest in the 2013 account. In 2013 should be taken into account along with 10, 12, uh, 10, 10, 11, and 12 as well, because that would formulate part of his remuneration. Um, my, uh, my Lord, yeah, my, my... What I'm saying, the year 2013 is still important for the claimant. Um, my, my instructions were to consider whether the proposed treatment was consistent with prior, in prior years and international accounting standards. It, they, they weren't to carry out a okay, detailed that, that, assessment that's, that's of the 2013 yes. accounts. Yes. Thank you. I have no further questions. No more questions. No. Mr. Kim. No further questions. No further questions. Well, thank you very much. You made it the books. We came to the yes, that concludes the case. I think for both evidence. Parties. Yes. Um, your lordship, you recall that uh, my learned friend and I proposed uh, doing written submissions, and we, I suppose, to some extent, although you did reach a final. I think we did reach a final view on that. Is, 
to us providing the group submission. So yes. we proceeded on that basis. Can we suggest, I mean, we're in your hands. Well, just the timing and the length of submissions. Yeah. Well, I was going to suggest that we curtail our weekly submissions to no more than 20 pages. I think that would be proportionate, given that it's a three-day trial. I think more than that might be disproportionate. Yes. 20. Um, and 28 days from today's date? Unless your Lordship wants them sooner. Not at all, because I'll be going on holiday as well, so... Well, if, if your Lordship is not back for 28 days, then we're quite happy to... Or, or longer, we're quite happy to... We're in your house. Malo yeah, I'll be back from holiday. 1st of August, almost. 1st of August. Can I just take instructions? Yes. Your Lordship, could I take it from that that it's unlikely that you'll be... Uh, deliberating on matters before that date. Yes. May I just confirm? Uh, so, uh, not before the 1st of August, um, and any date thereafter that your Lordship chooses. Yeah, but I would like to make 1st of August as a, at least a deadline, like yes. every like submissions submitted before the court. Yes. So, um, so that that's give us about six weeks? Yes. Ample time. So not more than 20 pages and 1st of August. Uh, well, in what order you do it? Do you, do you need to submit it? Well, I would have thought all in one time? Or, or, or the defendants wish to submit it just after the claimant? Or is that? No, I, I would be um, urging simultaneous exchange. I think that's fair. And then if either party wants a right to reply, yeah, I'd like to apply on points of law uh, within 14 days and after. Yeah. So, so that's simultaneous submission by? 1st of August. No, yeah, oh, no, simultaneous submission by mid-July. Yes. Could we then the defendant right, right to reply yes. by, by ma maximum by 1st of August. Yes. Yeah, the right. So each party with the right to reply by the 1st yeah. of August. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. So the reply we should not be more than 10 pages? Yes. 10 pages for the reply. Maximum? Yes, I'm happy with that. Of course, it's a reserve as well. Thank you very much. Thank you.